There isn't a day that goes by where I don't feel truly blessed to have the family that I have. Family can be such a complex subject for many people, but I can't lie, I have been, and continue to be, very lucky to have such a supportive network of family around me. In this episode, we get to explore the creative and wonderful mind of someone in my family, a one of the eight co-founder and somebody I fondly refer to as Dad. For my sister and I, Dad has always been a storyteller, both at the dinner table while we wait for one of our mum's famous roast dinners, or in his place of work, being a storyteller by trade. John Worley has made a career out of helping brands and businesses tell their story, so we thought it was about time we get him to share his story and how it has led to the birth of one of the eight. John talks about his misconception that ordinary people can't have a positive impact on others, and stresses our belief that everyone has the power to affect change and inspire. One of the eight is underpinned by family, not just in the biological sense either, but also within the sense of family that can be fostered in community, unity and shared culture, without any blood connection at all. And in this episode, we want to welcome our listeners to the One of the Eight family. We've got a like a massive network of people who are who are achieving and doing amazing and inspiring things, and and it, the point of one of the eight is to share these stories. So you know you can you can understand that actually, what what they're doing, I could do. I'm Jake Worley, and this is one of the eight, bringing you the real life stories of real world people, the things they have achieved and the things that have inspired them. In this episode, I'm excited to say that I'm joined by a one of the eight co-founder, a man who I've looked up to since the day I was born, and a man that I'm proud to call my dad. Now, a quick LinkedIn search will tell you that John Worley is a branding specialist, a man who helps businesses tell their story. But in this episode, we're excited to share his story and how that's led to the birth of one of the eight. So, John, welcome. Hi, Jake. Thank you very much. And thank you for the flattering intro. So... I'd like to start with where it all began for yourself. You're currently a fascinating brand storyteller, but where did all that start? I was um, I was kind of raised in a family that always encouraged creativity. It's something I'll always be uh, always be grateful for. My dad would often come home from work and and get out a sketch pad or or, or paints. He loved to draw and paint. And uh, it's something that I've always tried to encourage in my own family now, including you, Jake. So um, I think creativity is is a, is a powerful thing to have, and I think it's something that that um, basically we can all use to the benefit of other people. Okay, fantastic. And you've worked on some really fascinating, and do work on some really fascinating stuff, but. Was that where you originally started? Did you go to university or was it something that you just picked up naturally? Um I was um I was kind of in a in a fortunate position with my education um and didn't necessarily capitalize on the position that I was that I was put in. Um so I was quite determined to leave school early and um I still regret now really not not going to university, but I uh, I left school on the promise that to my parents that I could only do it if I could get a job, and I always had ambition to be uh, to be an architect. Three dimensional design fascinated me, but um, unfortunately um, didn't have the application for the qualifications. So I took the two dimensional route, and I was lucky enough to be given a graphic design apprenticeship with an agency. Okay, and do you think? For anyone listening, obviously in today's age, um, a lot of people go to university. It's kind of the thing you're told to do that schools tell you to do. Do you think that you'd be where you are now if you'd gone to university? Or do you think kind of being chucked in at the deep end forced you to learn quickly and get to where you've got now out of kind of the pressure of not being as prepared as you can be now? Um, Working in in a small agency, um with an apprenticeship in a small agency it it definitely was a bit like being pushed into the six foot end and I had to learn to swim quite quickly um but I worked with a really talented guy and um I was given good direction and and quickly allowed to work on on accounts design accounts that that really helped me to learn quite quickly um in the last couple of months I've been fortunate enough to start working with a university myself I do some associate lecturing um MMU in Manchester 
And that has shown me that that basically I think it's more about the individual than 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 a one size fits all solution. I think you should be able to choose what route suits you best. And I think apprenticeships have come round again to be um, really something that's really quite strong again now. I don't think it's it's absolutely obligatory to go to university in order to succeed. Uh, but I, th- I I see from from people like yourself that it, it's also a, a fantastic way to grow. Um, one thing that I don't think university can teach you is kind of your idea creation. It can give you ways to figure stuff out and come up with ideas, but a lot of ideas just come purely from your own head. They're ways that you just think of in the moment. It's your own take on things. And that's kind of what I've seen your work evolve to in the last couple of years with your brand storytelling, that the way that you perceive a business and how the consumers see it, you've really developed a niche of helping a business tell its story, what it offers, the products and services. How have you got into that? I I kind of became, um, I I guess, I became fascinated by the power of brand as a communication uh, communication platform, really. Um, I was fortunate enough to, to travel the world quite a bit as an art, a photographic art director, and that opens your eyes up to lots of different ways of thinking, to different people's cultures, to, to different ways of life, to uh, different ways of, of delivering campaigns and creativity. And I got to meet and work with an awful lot of interesting people. And this kind of led me to become more and more, um, I guess, fascinated with brand as a communication platform. And in the last five years or so, um, my career has been entirely focused on branding, on building brands and on brand communication. And one of the people that I've that I've met recently is a behavioral scientist. Working with her from time to time, I've kind of learned about different ways that the mind works, and how much uh, how much of a part emotion plays in 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 decision making and decision making of consumers. And it's it's something that you're now seeing come through with a, an awful lot of brands around the world. There are brands like uh, Patagonia. Um, Warby Parker, Tom's, uh, B and B. Um, I guess today brands that have that have really built, um, they've really built a presence around how they communicate with with um, with consumers, with an audience um, through storytelling. Legos, another fantastic example. They they do a great job. I mean, you know, and they've expanded their their portfolio out now to films, and you know that that's a fantastic brand. Why is it that you think? companies have to tell their story what what effect does it have well as human beings we've been we've been sitting around campfires since uh, you know since day one you know we've sat around campfires and we've shared stories and and the human kind of condition is is hardwired to share stories we love to do it you know today we do it on social media we do it with the tv you know we do it we do it sat in a pub or around the dinner table we never stop you know, we're, we're hardwired for stories. And, you know, there's an interesting stat that I read recently uh, from Stanford University that said that, that a story is actually uh, 22 times uh, more memorable than, than a stat or a fact. Okay. And it's something that, that kind of sticks in the human condition, and we love it. We always have, and we love to share them, and, we you know, we love to tell them. And you think consumers almost feel like they want to be part of the company's story? Totally. Um, if... if as a brand, if you can draw consumers into your story and include them in it and make them part of it, and they can contribute to it as well, then then you know you're really going to succeed. Okay, and you think that kind of what brands are do, kind of what the brand is supposed to do in its purpose, is it purely profit building, or is there more to it than that now? I mean, there's always been a, a kind of, I guess there's always been a belief that the that, that businesses exist to make profit, and of, and of course they do. But I think there are also lots of other ways that they can affect um, society and culture. Um, I discovered a book a short while ago um, written by two um, US-based marketers, one East Coast, one West Coast, um, two guys who had kind of dedicated all their lives and time to persuading people to buy products. And so they kind of recognized it. Hold up there. Wait a minute. Let's see if we can use these abilities to actually um, do something else as well. 
So they sort of stepped away from from the hardcore uh, roles in marketing that they had, and they created something called Good Is The New Cool. And I completely recommend that book to anyone who's listening, um, written by Aftel Aziz and Bobby Jones. And they basically um, got into brands who are actually doing something about giving back at the same time as, as existing and making money. There's absolutely nothing wrong with a business wanting to drive profit and make money. It, that's, it's all good. But if they can do something um, worthwhile and give back to the community and society at the same time, then, wow, you know, that's that's so much better. I think there's probably there's quite a hard balance to make, isn't there, for a business between we want to have an impact and we want to help, but we can't do that unless we make money. Yeah, I mean, there's a fantastic example of, um, you know, with, with Tom's shoes. And for, for anyone that doesn't know this example, the guy who founded this company has been kind of, I guess, applauded by some and... Um, not so much, not so much by others because you know he he is he's making a lot of money with his business but he's also doing a lot of good with his business and there's this kind of i guess juxtaposition between somebody who is trying to do good in a world but also making a lot of money and there's there's, there's been a belief that you, that you can't really do both well of course you can uh not just can but should um, I've been fortunate enough recently to work with a company, um, and this was this was in football. And the brand that I work with is part of a group that operates um, a philosophy called Company Karma. And what's that about? Company Company Karma means that they won't this this group of companies. I think there are 120 brands in the in the group, but this group of companies. Um, will not they will not take on anything that drives business unless it has some um some co- some company karma in other words unless it delivers something back into society or the community so every single aspect of their business has a giving back or um a doing good aspect to it so it's it's playing quite a bit on human nature and more of the consumer's emotional side that they're kind of not just their purchase behavior, but also who they are as people. Absolutely, because brands actually are one of the biggest ways that reflect who we are as people. The brands we wear, the the brands we drive, the brands we eat, you know, the brands we watch. Um, all of these things are things that we surround ourselves with because they reflect us, or we believe they do. So we like things that that actually tell 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 our story, tell something about us. You know, there's um there's a fantastic quote by um a neuroscientist called Antonio Damasio and his quote is, is much used and I've used it so many times in presentations I gotta I can't lie. <laughs> but it is a fantastically powerful quote and it says that um he says that we are not thinking machines that feel, we are feeling machines that think. And the kind of subtext to that quote is that 95% of our decision-making processes are emotional. Not, not, um, they're not driven by, by what we think is is simple cognitive behaviour. They're driven by emotion, and emotion connects directly into the stories that are told by brands and the behaviours. I've I've had a really eye-opening experience on on a recent project. Um, with football and that that has been to to understand the scale and the magnitude of the water scarcity problem that we have going on on the planet and it's led me into um spending quite a bit of time reading reports on the world economic forum um trying to understand better ways to increase the circular economy and also um sustainability and how that how that whole thing connects back into the way a brand behaves I um I attended a, a seminar recently and saw a guy explain how he is working on a project where every single piece of clothing should be designed in a stage where it can be retro engineered back to being fiber or back to being thread. So it begins a process where where I guess recycling is designed in from the beginning. And it's fascinating to see that people are actually starting to starting to think and behave in that way. 
because you know we have to so clearly from listening to kind of the stuff you work on and the people you work with coming up with creative and impactful ideas is where your kind of skills and passions lie so that leads me on to my my next big question i'd love to hear where did the idea of one of the eight come from the the idea is is um i guess it it, it came from from a couple of a couple of places really and one is that i think there's a there's a massive misconception that that ordinary people people like you and i we just spend the day just doing the day to day and you know we're kind of i guess we're not impacting the world we're not impacting culture we're not impacting other people's behavior we're just cracking on and doing what we do go to work pay the bills walk the dog eat dinner watch the football and do this you know eat sleep repeat and and i think that that is a misconception because i think each and every one of us are, are living a life where we can affect other people and we can inspire other people and i think if you look at social media i mean i'm i'm not one of these one of the older generation who thinks okay um i don't like social media i love it i use it um i'm active on instagram uh, twitter linkedin i love social media it's a very very good form of communication it's a it's a yeah it's a powerful communication tool but i do think it is full of an awful lot of nonsense as well i mean you know you can't deny that really and it's full of it's full of content that makes people actually think well actually is is social media really a good thing well of, of course it is i mean if you look at any form of communication conversation um, the telephone you know you you have a conversation on your mobile phone you can fill that with rubbish or you, or you can make it meaningful and i think one of the eight is is an idea born from actually delivering something that's meaningful and worthwhile through the internet through podcasts and through social media and actually delivering stories of real world people you know celebrities there's nothing wrong with reading about celebrities and finding out what celebrities do it's it's fine but we don't want to do that all the time sometimes we want to find out about people like ourselves and actually be amazed and surprised and inspired by what everyday people are actually doing in their lives cuz you know god knows there's some amazing things being done you know there's so much good stuff happening and there are so many um, there are so many people doing amazing things and a lot of these people are just like you and me they're people who've got everyday jobs they're people who you know who go home walk the dog eat dinner watch the football they're those kind of people they're not people who are on you know million pound yachts or driving lamborghinis they're just normal people like you and i and they're actually doing incredible things and one of the eight has been kind of i guess one of its one of its main reasons for existing is to actually l- let people hear and share some of these stories and because of the network of people that we know we're able to do this with people from all across the globe and that's e- that that opens up an even more fascinating dialogue so we can actually find out what people are doing in 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 India in Costa Rica in Poland in Montreal in Glasgow in Liverpool you know, we've we've got we've got a like a massive network of people who are who are achieving and doing amazing and inspiring things. And and it, the point of one of the eight is to share these stories. So you know, you can you can understand that actually, what what they're doing, I could do. It's a, it makes aspiring and achieving things a little bit more relatable when they're not your Kardashians or. You know the, the, these people that your Floyd Mayweather's that are all cars, money. This is you know the ultimate American dream type life. When they're coming from day to day real life people, I guess listeners are a little bit more kind of okay. I could do that too. Yeah, I mean, e- even in 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 a couple of the episodes that we've recorded so far, you listen to something that somebody says and thinks, "Oh wait a minute, I could do that," or "Why why don't I do that?" Or you know, I know someone else who could do that, and it's it's incredible, really, that that there are so many things that you could that you could take from these stories that that make you believe actually, I could I could achieve all kinds of things that I didn't really imagine I could I, I ever could. So, as the idea, the brand, and the community is starting to grow, one of the eight as a name 
always sparks quite curious conversation with anyone who sees or hears it. Can you tell us a little bit more about the name? One of the eight it refers to eight billion because there are eight billion people on the planet. And, you know, we are all part of those eight billion people. We're all part of something bigger, something greater. And each and every one of us, you know, we're all born the same. We all start from the same, literally from the same point, no matter how much money, no matter what country, no matter where we come from, no matter what our background is, there's a point at which we all begin and we're all part of those 8 billion people. And I think there are so many of those people that have great stories to tell that aren't rich, aren't famous, aren't celebrities, aren't sportsmen, aren't musicians. They're just the people that they're real world people with real world stories. And these are the people that we want to hear from on here. I think when you see celebrities and you know you look in the films and, and the the sports stars and I mean I'm guilty of it myself sometimes. If you see a famous person, you get starstruck. But I think one of the eight really is you know it, its goal is to, as you've just said, highlight the fact that if you step back, we're all the same human beings, all running around on the same planet. Exactly. I mean that you couldn't have put it better. That's exactly. I I um I had a I had a really interesting experience. Um, it was er- early earlier this year where I was driving home in in the commuter traffic, and I was on a road that's always really busy. And there's always it takes one of those roads where it takes you four or five times to get through the traffic lights. And there's a hospital on one side of the road and shops on the other, and. During the queuing process of trying to get to the traffic lights, I noticed what looked like a bundle of rags, half on the pavement, half in the road. And I was watching people kind of walking towards it, thinking, why doesn't someone kind of push all that out of the way? But they're they're all walking towards it or stepping over it. And I watched a guy in a smart suit with a mobile phone kind of get really quite angry that this stuff was in his way and step over it and almost give it a little jab with his foot as he went by and then I realised as I got a bit closer that it actually looked maybe like it was not just a pile of rags and just as I made that realisation someone ran across from the hospital over the road still in the green scrubs that they were and he kind of knelt down by this pile of rags and uncovered some of it and sure enough there's you know there's a there's a person inside so it was a homeless clearly you know a homeless person who was you know in in a pretty bad way really i think so i pulled the car over and this guy says no no it's all good don't worry i'm handling this um thanks for stopping but but i'm on and he was on his phone and he was a medic so he was dealing with things and he said, you know, thanks for stopping, but, but it's all under control. And then just as I was about to pull away, he said to me, you know what, mate? He said, this is, this is not a bundle of rags. This is someone. So at one of the eight, we're quite geeky about startups and the idea of creating something tangible from an idea. But we also, you know, it's the possibility that a successful business has the power to do good as well, as we touched on earlier. How does one of the eight give back? Okay, so you know, just just relating to that story with um with with the, with the bundle of rags that turned out to be a person, then you know, if if we think about that for a minute, then I kind of looked at that and the guy said to me, you know, this is this is someone here. I just thought, yeah, you know, he's he's just one of you know we're the same. He was he came from the same start point as I did. You know, he was born onto the onto the planet and. You know, how's he ended up where he is and how have I ended up where I am? And, you know, I'm interested to know the stories of both. And so I I just think that that then gives you an opportunity to recognize people who are perhaps a bit less fortunate or, uh, you know, have turned left when they maybe should have turned right. And, you, you know, you look at these people and think, OK, let's see if we can't, you know, if we can't help them out. And so... The point of, of, of the giving back aspect of one of the eight is, is I guess, um, it's threefold, really. Um, firstly, it, it kind of it gives you an opportunity to share the stories of, of you know, real-world people. Um, so right there is, a, is, is an opportunity to, to listen, to share, and to learn. 
Um, the second one is that everyone that features in an episode is asked to actually give something that inspires others. So uh, what has inspired them? Uh, a book, a movie, a uh, music, a uh, film, an event, an individual. So if they give that for that source of inspiration to one of the eight, then other people can use it too. And the third aspect is that, you know, we will have apparel um, available with the brand. And that apparel will trigger a donation to people in need. So uh, it'll, it'll, it'll mean that every time anyone buys a T-shirt, for example, then we give something that helps a homeless person keep warm and dry. So it's a kind of... I, I, I make no apologies. It's a it's an idea um, borrowed from from the brand I talked about earlier, Tom's, who actually give a pair of shoes to um, needy communities every time someone buys a pair of their shoes, and uh, you know the idea is great, and we're we're doing the same. So, if someone buys a one of the eight t shirt, then we make a donation to um, to people who look after homeless people. Uh, we give them something to to keep the cold out and to keep the rain off. I just want to touch on the apparel side of one of the eight. When you, you wear a T-shirt and it has a company's name or a company's logo, it represents something, it means something to you, it's part of who you are. When someone wears one of the eight clothing, what is it that you want to see and feel? Part of part of one of the eight is, is that there will be apparel available and, you know, the classic T-shirt and who knows sweatshirt but then the point of wearing a one of the eight t-shirt is not that we want to see hey look there's our brand on somebody um if we see someone walking down the street wearing a one of the eight t-shirt then the point of that is that we'll know that they wanted to become part of the movement they've wanted to share stories they wanted to inspire so it's about becoming part of the movement and you know we all know that anyone that's watched one of my favorite films forrest gump and you see the point at which he runs through a puddle and turns a turns a plain T-shirt into a smiley face T-shirt. You know, the power of, of a message on a T-shirt. And I think, as I've, as I've just mentioned, the power of this is, is to say, okay, there's another person that's become part of our movement that's shared a story that's been inspired. So um, the apparel will develop and it will change as one of the eight develops and grows itself. Um, but the message and a purpose will never change. So whether it's worn on your head, whether it's worn on your chest, the message and a purpose will always be the same. It'll be about being part of a movement. It'll be about inspiring other people. And it'll also be about triggering something that gives back to people less fortunate. So we we had a different Christmas experience this year in that we... Um we had a little opportunity with a with a shop that was unfortunately closing down not far from where I live in London and it's an outdoors store that sells you know all of your hiking your climbing your skiing gear and they had lots of sleeping bags that were at a price where we kind of felt like you know we can do something with these so we took the sleeping bags and some clothing that we had um to the the homeless center and you know it was clear to see there were some people going th- you know through some really tough times there but this center is fantastic the people there are completely selfless giving people that you know just really look to try and get the people that go there back on their feet again and in a position where they're ready to start enjoying life why is it that one of the eight looks to support the homeless in particular i think that um it 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 partly goes back to my uh, my my little story of uh you know of the, of the pile of rags at the side of the road which w- which was a real cold shower for me um it was you know a massively eye opening experience but it also goes back to the fact that i think you know as a as a i guess as a culture um it's it's a little bit too easy to judge and I, and i think none of us really know you know the the complete stories of of people who are who are sleeping on the streets um and you know they're as wide and varied as as everyone else's stories and you know no one really chooses to be in adverse circumstances no no one puts themselves in those kind of situations by choice and i think one of the things that's always struck me 
is you know living in a country where uh, we see more than our fair share of rain and dodgy weather and you know it's cold and you know you look at people who are, who are huddled in a doorway and you know I, I watched a guy um I watched a guy one day walking down the road holding a sleeping bag over his head um in a pouring rain so the sleeping bag was soaking he was soaking and I was just thinking, okay, where's he going to end up now? Where you know everything is soaked with rain, it's freezing cold. And I just think that you know it doesn't take an awful lot to to actually make a small difference, and it is only a small difference because you know the problem is, is a big one. And I'm not saying for one minute that you know that that we have answers to this, but I I do think you know you can make small differences. And I think you know referring back to sport, I think. Um, British Cycling um, talked about incremental gain and, and I think incremental gain is something that we can all consider because if you make one tiny little bit of difference then lots of tiny differences add up to you know a slightly bigger difference and so on and so forth and I think this is one of the things that that Actually, when you look at look at people who are, who are sleeping in a doorway or you know in these in these unfortunate situations. They're, they're, again, I go back. You know, they're one of the eight. They're, they're, you know, they're part of the bigger picture. They're exactly the same as you or I. So, what's the ambition of one of the eight? The, the best way to say that is is um, one of the words we've used in the description of it, and that is we've described it as a movement. And I think I think that's a good choice of word. So basically, one of the eight wants to become a movement of of people who want to share stories who want to let other people know what they've done, what they've achieved, um, who are real-world people like you and I who are doing incredible things. And the, the things that they are doing can inspire other people. Their philosophies can inspire other people. Um, events and life-changing aspects of their stories can, can affect other people. They can enrich people's lives. They can help people to move forward. And, you know, on a very basic level, they're, they're pretty entertaining to listen to too. So the ambition is, is, is to grow this and have more and more and more stories available for people to listen to and more and more people from around the world contributing to one of the eight, contributing to the movement. So you'll be able to read interviews, you'll be able to read stories, you'll be able to listen to podcasts and you'll be able to kind of get an experience that's inspiring and uplifting. So it feels a bit funny asking a guest this as you're my dad, but at one of the eight, we love to get our guests to share something with our listeners that has inspired them. It may be a book, a piece of music, an experience, or a person. Who or what has inspired you? The biggest inspiration to me is is my family. Um, yeah, I would say that's the biggest inspiration in my life. But then, looking at it from a professional point of view, um, back in the day when I thought I knew it all, and I was like struggling for ideas, I worked with a a really well-known creative director and that creative director kind of said to me okay when you when you're stuck for ideas or when you're stuck for you're stuck for a way forward or you're stuck for um, a creative route he said one of the best things you can do is read a book listen to a piece of music or watch a movie and have your mind set in the space of the idea that you're searching for while you do that and the ideas will come and it's a fantastic piece of advice not just for anyone in the creative industry but for anyone who's looking for inspiration or ideas they come from elsewhere again you know referring to one of the eight sometimes they'll come from a story you listen to on one of the eight so with that in mind i guess i could go on at great length uh, as a big reader there are so many books i'd love to recommend and as a you know as a music fan with a with a really eclectic taste um i could recommend all kinds of things um i'm definitely not going to go there with film because you know whatever day it is my, my if someone asks me what my favorite film is it, it it changes but um a book i would recommend is the one i mentioned earlier which is good is the new cool and you'll find a link to the book on the site also a great book that i recommend anyone to read is one called tribes Tribes is written by um, by an American marketer called Seth Godin, and that book is um, extremely inspirational. And it's also um, 
it's beautifully explained in the most simplistic terms and it's um it's a it's a very quick read but it's a really really uh, worthwhile read in terms of music um in the last kind of 12 to 18 months i've had i guess a couple of different genres of music that have inspired really good ideas and um one is is completely unexpected for me really because i'm not a not necessarily a classical music fan but um there's a guy called Ludovico Ionaudi whose work we've used um to inspire a number of projects in, including one in in global travel and listen to that guy um if if you listen to his music and it doesn't conjure up pictures and ideas then then you know I don't know what will um and i guess another one is a DJ that I'm um, that I'm listening to a lot of at the moment, who is to me the soundtrack of one of the eight. His music feels and exists in the same headspace as one of the eight, and he's a DJ called Tebra. That's T E B R A, and again, you know, we'll put a link to his music on on the on the one of the eight dot com. Thank you, Dad, for sharing your fascinating experiences and take and kind of vision for what we're doing here at one of the eight. It's been great to have you on. It's a pleasure. Um, as you can probably tell, I'm a nervous interviewee, but um, it's been great to talk about one of the eight, and especially great to talk about it with you. There are almost eight billion people on our planet, and John Worley is one of the eight. You can find links to the things that have inspired John, and discover more about the birth of one of the eight online at oneoftheeight.com. Everyone has a story to share. Everyone has something to give everyone can inspire one of the eight is a movement of real world people from across the globe sharing real life stories inspiring others enriching lives and giving something back i am you are everyone is one of the eight now streaming on spotify apple podcast google play or wherever you listen to your podcast be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Join the movement at oneoftheeight.com.